pixel has the value 0 and a gray pixel is somewhere in between depending on its grayscale. To get the hidden layer values, we need to take the input values and the weight matrix that connects both layers, then multiply them through matrix multiplication and add the bias weights. Let's illustrate this in detail for the first hidden neuron. Each input value is multiplied with its weight connection that goes to the first hidden neuron. The resulting five values are then summed up. Last, the bias weight is added and voila, we have the hidden neuron value. Note that the bias neuron is not directly present in the implementation because 1 times the bias weight values equals the bias weight values. But it's more tangible to think that there is also a bias neuron as shown here. You might wonder why the variable is named h underscore pre. That's because we are not done with the hidden layer yet. The value in one of the hidden neurons could be extremely large compared to the values in the other hidden neurons. To prevent this, we want to normalize the values into a specific range like we did for the input values. This can be done by applying an activation function to it. A commonly used one is the sigmoid function. It is defined as follows, looks like this and normalizes its input, which is h underscore pre in our case, into a range between 0 and 1. That's exactly what we want. We then repeat the same procedure to get the output values and therefore finish the first training step. The second step is to compare the output values with the label which is 0. Please remember that we use a smaller network for the visualizations, meaning that the network shown here can only learn to differentiate between the numbers 0, 1 and 2. To compare the output values with the label, we need some sort of function again, this time called cost or error function. Like for the activation function, there are many possible functions. We'll stick with the most commonly used one, which is the mean squared error. It works by calculating the difference between each output and the corresponding label value, then squaring each difference, followed by summing the resulting values together and dividing it by the number of output neurons. The resulting value is our cost or error depending on which word you prefer. The second code line checks whether our network classified the input correctly. For this, we check which neuron has the highest value. Here it is the first neuron, so our neural network classified the input as zero. Because this matches the label, we increase our counter by one. If the label would have been one or two, we would not increase the counter. Please note that this line is not important for the training itself, but we do it because we would like to know how many images are classified correctly after each epoch. Now that we have the error value, we need to know how strong each weight participated towards it and how we can adjust the weights to have a smaller error when we see the same inputs again. This is the most crucial and complicated part about training neural networks. The underlying algorithm is called backpropagation. You've probably already seen it mathematically written somewhere. If not, there you go. But please don't panic, rather look at the code. It's actually just six lines. Backpropagation works by propagating the error from the end back to the start. We start with our weights that connect the hidden layer with the output layer. In the first step, we need to calculate the delta for each neuron. Normally, we'd need the derivative of the cost function. But thanks to a few mathematical tricks that can be used for the mean squared error cost function, we can just write O minus L. So the delta for an output neuron is basically just the difference between its output and the label. So what's with the error value we calculated in the last step then? Well, we don't need it but I still wanted to show it to you because it is required when having a different cost function. In the next step, the delta values are used in a matrix multiplication with the hidden layer outputs to get an update value for each weight connecting both layers. Since the update values just represent how to improve the weights with respect to the current input, 
We want to adjust the weights carefully. Therefore, we multiply them with a small learning rate. But why is there minus in front of it? Well, I won't go into detail about it in this video, but you can think of the update values as values representing how to maximize the error for the input. So we need to negate them to have the opposite effect. Alright, so now we have updated the weights between the hidden and output layer except for the bias weights. The idea is basically the same with the difference that the bias neuron value is always 1. Since there's no need to multiply something with 1, we can just multiply the delta values with the learning rate and negate the result. If we look at the update for the weights connecting the input layer with the hidden layer, we can see that nearly everything looks the same except for the delta calculation. That's because this time we can't use some mathematical tricks to simplify the equation, so we need the derivative of the sigmoid function h, which is sigmoid times 1 minus sigmoid. So we can write it as h times 1 minus h. Then we need our updated weight matrix, transpose it, matrix multiply it with the delta values and finally multiply that result with the derivative values. The resulting delta values show how strong each hidden neuron participated towards the error. Those values can then be used to calculate the update values for weights connecting the input with the hidden layer. And if we would have a few more hidden layers with the sigmoid activation function, we just have to repeat those steps over and over till all weights are updated. That's it. Now you know how to train a neural network from scratch. Let's run it and see what accuracy we can achieve. While it's running, I'd like to let you know that any additional information and corrections that might come up after publishing this video will be added to the description. So if there's anything you're wondering about, I've probably already added it in there. If not, feel free to ask in the comment section. Wow, over 93%. That's quite good. But there's one part left. What is it for? Well, using the neural network in action, of course. Let me quickly go through what's happening here. First, we expect an input between 0 and 59,999, which is used to choose one of our 60,000 images. We then extract the specified image and add it to a plot object. Next, we do the forward propagation step to get our output values and set the title of the plot to the number of the strongest activated neuron. Then we show the plot and can see that the neural network correctly identified the three. So we scroll down, hit the subscribe button and ignore the notification bell, which is a huge mistake because then we cannot be the dude writing first or second in the comment section. The code explained here will be available for everyone. Link in the description. The video is animated using Python. A second video about how I created this video as well as the Python source code for all animations can be accessed by becoming a patron. Link in the description. Thanks and I hope to see you in the next video.